Hello and welcome back to Attacking Third. Sandra Herrera and Lisa Roman joined with a special guest. We are so pleased to have player interviews alongside our team-by-team -team previews ahead of the 2022 season. And today we are joined by Jasmine Spencer forward with Angel City FC. And first time on Attacking Third. Welcome to the show, Jasmine. Thank you so much for having me. We're excited to, to chat with you and uh, hearing all of the wonderful noises of preseason and what that means. Uh, but it is your first time on the show, like I mentioned. So, I mean, we're going to, we're just going to keep it easy breezy to start with uh, how, how's it going? How was your off season? Was there anything uh, off season, non-soccer related that you got to do participate in uh, maybe take a little bit of a break? Uh, oh, I mean, not really. My family owns a food truck, which is, I guess, pretty cool. So I spent a couple days working on the food truck. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, no, I just hung out at home and enjoyed some family time. A food truck. Yum. What kind of food are you serving? Where is it located? How do I get some of this? <laughs> plug, 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 plug. <laughs> it's called jam and jerk. Uh, my husband and, uh, father-in-law are like the, the main chefs, but it's a, a family ordeal. I don't, I don't do the, the cooking. I'm the register girl, um, but it's great. So it's a Caribbean cuisine. Oh, so if I go, if I go to, to jam and jerk, I can get, can I get like some, some pineapple jerk or is it just straight jerk or. Oh, it depends. So there's a special every week. So the menu, okay. but jerk chicken is a staple, uh, curry goat, uh, oxtail. Those are like staple items that are there. Beef patties. Um, and then there's like a, a specialty soup of the weekend and uh, another specialty dish that comes up. You, you got to follow them on Instagram. Jam oh. and jerk. <laughs> Plug Plug it. it. Plug it. I love that. Okay. So I know you said you don't cook and you are the register girl, which very important, right? You have to ring everything up. Do you ever get a say in the special, the specialties of the week, like uh, input in the flavors or what should be the specialty? Um, I love jerk pork. It's like not, it comes probably like once every two months, but I, you'll find me on the truck the, the weekend that it's there. <laughs> Awesome. So I know what I'm ordering uh, when I go there. That is fantastic. Hit them up on Instagram. What's the handle again, Jasmine? Jam and Jerk Cuisine. Jam and Jerk Cuisine. I am so pumped to go follow them. My mouth is already watering about that. Um, so off season, you were busy. You were in the truck. You had a, you had a lot going on, um, but you were selected in the NWSL expansion draft in this off season by angel city. Were you surprised by this selection? Um, and how did you find out that you were heading to angel city? Um, yeah, I was a little surprised. I mean, you know, these things like it's so hard to predict with who's going to end up where, and, you know, maybe they're eyeing a player and then somebody else gets taken. It's like, you know, you flip a coin. So, um, I knew the opportunity might happen. And then uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, but when it did, I was really excited. How did you find out about it? Oh, actually, that's a funny story um, because I get like really bad draft anxiety. So I don't watch any, any drafts that I could be partaking in. Um, so I went to the gym and I missed Annie's call ahead of, you know, the selection saying that they were going to take me. And I came back and my niece ran in the room and was like, Auntie Jazza, I saw you on TV. And I was like, oh, cool. Like I got taken somewhere. And then uh, my agent called me and it was like, we're going to LA. So actually my niece was the first one to break the news to me. <laughs> I love that. That's so cute. Uh, now it's, uh, it's official, right? Preseason is underway. Uh, players are getting are back in the market, lacing up the cleats, you know, but when it comes to expansion sides, you know, entering the fold of, of NWSL, you don't have unfamiliarity there, like the expectation to sort of build uh, things up. So it's very early in the, in the preseason right now, we're talking about the first couple of weeks. So what, what is the, the vibe in these early days of, of preseason right now amongst the roster? Yeah, it's, it's been great. Honestly, from day one, the intensity and the quality and the level of play has been there. And it, it's been so fun to be a part of it. I think the beauty of being an expansion team is uh, you get to set those expectations and those standards every day. And so to be a part of that and um, the front office staff has done such a good job of like building the core of the group already. And um, it's just like so fun, really good group. And the locker room vibes are great. Uh, the intensity on the field is great. And so um, I think it, I think we're going to be an exciting team to watch. 
a new club, an expansion side in the league. However, for you, you're a veteran, a forward with a lot of experience. How does being a veteran in this league help you with an expansion team? Yeah, I think it's important. And we have quite a few on our roster, which is really big because we kind of know what it what to expect. We know what the, the games are going to be like. We know the competitive level. We know what it takes to um, get into playoffs. We have people who've, who've won the league before, won the regular season, won the championship. And so um, all that's really helpful in, you know, uh, gelling with the newcomers and people who maybe have international experience, but not particularly NWSL experience, but everyone is really hungry and it's a really nice balance between vets and, and newcomers. You know, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, maybe something that's uh, another thing that's personal to you. You're a big environmentalist. You started a clothing brand a few years ago. Jazz it up. I'll ask you off mic about the best way to get the merch. But let's talk now on mic about the actual brand. Why did you start it? How did it come to life? And uh, why is something like this so, so important to you and so personal to you to to spearhead this? Yeah, for sure. I think um it's something that I've always been passionate about growing up on Long Island. Like I, I lived at the beach every summer. Um, I just love being outdoors and I've always just felt a special connection to nature. And so, um, and I studied biology in college, you know, like this is, this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, and so when I started Jazz It Up, it was about four years ago. Um, I first started it as headbands and thought it was a good way to connect with fans and, you know, just, grow my own personal brand. And when I started to, you know, do a little bit of deep dive about the fashion industry, I realized that so many of the practices were detrimental to both the workers in the industry and the environment. And I was like, I don't think this is common knowledge and I have this great platform. So I want to grow the brand and really use it as a way to inspire and educate people about how we can do better by each other and the environment. And it's been really fun and, you know, something that I'm new to, but growing into. And it's just, yeah, it's really exciting. You are so passionate and you have been passionate and vocal about your uh, enthusiasm for the environment and for the community and and giving back. And, and you mentioned that when you were uh, drafted to LA that you were excited to get out in the community. Now that you've, you've been there, I know you're really involved in the soccer and it's preseason, but have you had a chance to experience the LA community or, or what are your plans to really get involved there in Los Angeles? Yeah, I haven't um, done too much hands-on stuff yet, but I've taken a couple calls with some really amazing organizations in the area. And I know that Angel City themselves have done such a good job of um, cementing ourselves in the community already. So I think between the two, um, we're going to have a lot of really cool things in the works coming up. Um, and I just think it's one of the coolest things about this club, you know, that like we are, of course, a sports organization, but we represent so much more. And um, building that relationship with the community is really only going to help us be uh, even bigger uh, staple in the city. You know, for you personally on the on the pitch, you know, you've had time with all kinds of different clubs different coaches throughout different leagues, right? Different players playing alongside of you. And as these first like early days with Angel City go, go by with you, have you had some time to reflect at all of like what you personally want your role to be within LA this year? Yeah, for sure. I think um, I actually was talking to my family about this. I think I have loved my journey and uh, all of the clubs and people that I've played with for that reason, I feel like I'm finally in a position where I feel complete as a player and now just want to let that shine on the field and help the next generation come up um, and, and find that in themselves as a player. I think I wouldn't trade any of the moves, cuts, trades, waves uh, for anything because it really just helped me mold me into this, you know, very versatile staple in the league. And, and I love that. You are versatile. You are staple. I love that. I love that phrasing for you. And it's so nice to hear that you feel complete with your journey and where you are. So when you uh, reflect on your career and how far you've come and you just take a look at the year ahead of you, the 2022 NWSL season, personally, what goals do you have for yourself in this season? 
Yeah, I mean, I want to first and foremost do whatever I can to help the team win. I love winning. Actually, I think more than I love winning, I hate losing. I lost in our little tic-tac-toe relay this morning, and I'm still angry about it. Um, So whatever role the team needs me to do to help us win, I will do, um, and I'll do it proudly. But uh, I always want to be considered one of the best. So, you know, making a best 11, being in consideration for those types of things is, is obviously a goal of mine. But um, for sure, just winning uh, is number one. You know, here on um, on attacking third, we've uh, been in the process of of celebrating the historic CBA, and we're still keeping that energy going through preseason, honestly. And for you, you know, a, a veteran player of the seat, you're someone who's been involved in NWSL in some capacity since its inaugural season with a number of different clubs, and. As we are celebrating this historic event, we just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the the newly ratified uh, CBA. Yeah, it's huge. Um, I hope everyone keeps celebrating and I, I hope we take this momentum and push it further and further so the game can continue to grow and um, the women athletes in this sport get everything that we deserve. Um, but it's it's huge. The league is only 10 years, which seems like a long time but it's still fairly new so to be able to get the cba at at year 10 is huge and you know for those of us who've been around the sport for a while this is our third time at a women's professional league in this country so i think you know even going back to those pioneers and the wusa days like it's just celebrating all of the people who have fought to get here today and saying like look what you've helped us do and we're here and we're going to keep building and and pushing the game forward Something about this CBA and and when you kind of read the fine print of it, it is so obvious that it is a direct reflection of players' experiences and what they have gone through and what they've witnessed and seen, whether it was through themselves or through their teammates. And those are, are the points that were put into this CBA. Is there a point that really stands out to you or resonates with you specifically in this CBA? Oh, I mean, there's so many. I, I feel like free agency is huge. Um, obviously, you know, having a minimum salary and and the financial uh, resources available is also huge. But people feeling like they're in control of their own career is huge. And I know um, it's something that I've lost a lot of teammates along uh, along the years because, you know, they were in a position where they had to choose like being close to family or going somewhere else without their consent. And they stepped away from the game because of it. So knowing that there's an opportunity to finally take control of your career and be where you want to be, that's going to make you happy. And then therefore play your best is, is huge. I'm with you on that. I think we have been uh, celebrating the CBA uh, throughout these early days of preseason. And I think as we continue to have conversations with players, um, on board about preseason energies uh, that we're still going to be talking about it. So thank you for uh, sharing a little bit of your perspectives on that. A lot of the times with these uh, guest segments, we like to close out the interviews with like having a little bit of fun. And we chatted a little bit already about food at the the top of the, the segment. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to keep that energy in a similar way, but we're going to move to to beverages, right? So a lot of what we've been chatting about with these players is uh, things have come up in terms of preseason. Like it's about getting back into a routine, establishing a rhythm. Right. And part of that, a lot of times is either like uh, the, the pre or post training or scrimmage or game type of beverage. So it's a two parter. Uh, Are you predominantly a a coffee drinker a and B if you are, what is typically your go-to beverage as part of your routine? Uh, I actually am not. Like a long time ago, somebody said that coffee stunts your growth. And I (laughs) felt like I I couldn't afford any more (laughs) things to take away from my height. So I just (laughs) never started drinking it. And now it's like too bitter for me. And I just, yeah, I am not a coffee drinker. (laughs) Jasmine, that is hilarious. Tell the people that maybe don't know how tall are you? I'm five feet and a quarter of an inch. That's right. (laughs) 
Don't you deny them that quarter of an inch. Every quarter of an inch counts. And then when you're wearing your cleats, that gives you another quarter. Let's just make it five, one, right? Like, let's just go for it. It's it's official. I love that though. We've been having a ton of interviews and I've been doing it as a two-parter question because I'm like, we're going to get somebody. Someone's going to come in here and be the combo breaker and say, actually, I don't drink coffee. I love that it was uh, for, it was you, Jasmine, for for this <laughs> one. So uh, thank you so so much. Uh, we appreciate the time as always. Whenever we get to spend some time with players, we always like to take the time at the end of the episode to thank our listeners. So thank you everybody for listening, Jasmine. Thank you for joining us. Best of luck in the 2022 season. Follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. And if you leave us a five-star review on Spotify, you can also do so on Apple Podcasts with a question and we'll answer it during our mailbag segment. We're also available as video. So please subscribe to us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com slash attacking third. And we'll be back with more ahead of the 2022 NWSL season. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Jasmine Spencer, this was Attacking Third. <laughs>